hi good morning everyone let's get started with our next topic for this tutorial which is on dual stack split so what is a dual stack split dual stack split is basically to split a dual stack system into two individual stacks so what we do is we take out the java stack from the system and delete the java schema and install the java schema into some other system or or do it in a different database so let's see how to perform this particular activity so this is basically a dual stack tool that we have downloaded from the marketplace and extracted here using sapcar and on extraction you can see this sap inst there so just right click on this and click on run as administrator okay so on running this particular tool we'll see how this is working okay so we have started this dual stack split tool and you'll see the interface of how this tool looks like so basically this is how it looks like there are two options here one is do you want to move the database java database or do you want to keep the database so move the database is basically you are removing the java stack and putting it in a different system keep the java stack is basically you are creating an m -card. So in our case, let's try to create an M uh, remove this particular stack. So move Java system. This is basically a central system. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to export the Java stack from here. Okay, so this is the step one for a dual stack split. So step one is export Java stack. Okay, so I have triggered it we'll see the next steps okay so basically this is taking out the java stack taking an export of java stack system only okay so the first step is it is asking for the profile folder where the profiles are present okay i have selected the default values which is correct let's go to the next folder which is the system id so we are using the current users domain for it okay so basically here we are defining the parameters then it is asking for the password for this particular user this is an os level password okay so i have given the os level password here So let's see what this message is. So profiles are selected. We'll again go back to the previous screen which is asking for the password for the user. Okay, so we have given the domain password for this SAP system administrator user okay so next step is it is validating the database SID host on which this database is and here we can specify if this is a rack system or not okay let's go to the next step Okay, now this is asking for the location where we want to export this data. Okay, so let's export this data here. Okay, so let me create this as Okay, I have created this as a sample Java export. Okay, so I am exporting in this location. Alright, let's go to the next step. 
and here we have selected manually stop the system when SAP prompts you. Okay, so it's giving message that shall I disable the AS Java? Yes, we want to get it disabled. Okay. So let's go to the next step in this tool. Okay, so here it is asking for validating all the information. So we are fine with it. Click on next. So it is running the export Java stack database and system export prepare to export Java generating this DB size file basically this is the file which using which the structure of the database basically the scheme of the database is created okay now the next step that which is running right now is the export from J Java database basically this is based on this the exports are created in the system okay so we are running this particular export process okay so after this the next is the export from java central instance and then archive the sap kernel and archive the java that is adobe document services data so these are basically the steps which are performed when we are exporting the data basically we are exporting only the java stack so this includes your java database export this includes your java central instance export this includes the sap kernel which will come with it and the adobe document services data so these are the things which is exported during this particular process so this has become pretty common because moving forward from netweaver 7.3 onwards there are no dual stacks especially with the exceptions of solution manager and the pi and in the latest version of pi that is in pi 7.31 uh, i think from service pack 5 onwards there are no more basically the sap strategy is for pi system it's going to be purely java stack system so but in 7.31 they have come up with both the flavors that is you can have a dual stack as well as you can have a uh, the single stack system which is the go forward strategy for sap moving forward for any of the dual stack uh, any of the pi systems so SAP is going away from the dual stack st strategy so that it is easier to manage it is easier to support and the resource which is used from the development perspective is also easier basically you have the separate set of ABAP people who can manage the ABAP stack there is a separate set of people who can manage Java stack and the support package strategy or the rollout strategy or the release strategy can be separated as well for these systems okay so that is about the dual stack split okay so dual stack split nowadays especially during this time as the sap hana is released which is just a single stack system there is no java stack in this given that the netweavers go forward strategy as well there is no java stack along with the BAP stack with the exception of just solution manager previously pi was also there but moving forward the pi is there is no dual stack pi is it's all going to be java stack okay so these are the only things that is there okay and it's pretty straightforward as well that we just saw basically it's you are just taking out exporting the data from the database you are deleting the schema once you are done and you are creating a new system and putting the schema there so in nutshell this is how the dual stack split works okay it shouldn't take more time it's basically a, at the max it can take about two two hours but if your java's stack it's pretty huge it may go up from 2 to 2.5 or 
at the max 3 hours but 2 hours is also pretty on the high side only here you can see that this is running for some time and probably it may not take even an hour because we are not using any other service except just one application which is the Adobe ok so that's it in this particular topic so let's wait for it to finish right now it is in the face of archive SAP kernel so basically it is just creating a copy of SAP kernel also because when we are building the Java stack from this export we need the kernel as well ok so right now the kernel it's the copy of the kernel is getting prepared so that is what will come along with the export tool ok so basically it is right now archiving the kernel folder ok so just archive is getting prepared from the kernel ok and let's wait for the next step which is going to be the adobe document services so it may take another say 5 minutes or so so let's wait for 5 minutes and we are actually in the execution phase so, so let's hang on for a few few minutes and then we'll close this particular training ok so technically there is nothing much involved except we have seen all the steps so let me go back and just reiterate all the steps one more time so what is happening is there we are doing an export of java stack ok then we are doing a database and system export ok so these are the two activities we are performing so first is the preparation files are prepared that is prepared to export java ok in any export exercise we create export the schema first so that is we create the schema structure of the schema first so that before we can perform any import we can validate the size that is for all the table spaces all the structure which is there what is the size we need in the remote system so after the initial validation so this file is an initial validation check from the size perspective ok so that is on the sizing side plus before the data and rest of the st stuff is exported based on this size it has the schema so the entire database table structure and the different data files which is required is created based on this file only so that is on the db size that is db size file ok then we have the export from java database basically this is the java database export then we have the java central instance export ok then kernel export and lastly the archive document services data ok so that is that's pretty much here in this topic ok let's wait for few more seconds or few more minutes before this gets completed ok so it's still running ok it's complete now you'll get this message once it is complete so we have completed the export process here ok as a next step what we need to do is we need to run this again using different id where or on the different system where we want to import it ok so for now let me stop this for a